Hi, everyone. All right. Here's a devotional for this Saturday, September 4th, 2021. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Keith, but I think that Keith wrote this one. And I wanted to save this one for last because if I had to pick a favorite for this week, this would be it. Now, most of the time, you know, the devotions that he sends are shorter. And I think I mentioned that before, but I don't know. Um, having to redo some of these recordings, I don't know what I've said and what I haven't. But anyway, um, this one's a little bit longer. But, you know, I have a very short attention span. But, you know, and but this one is worth reading through the whole thing. So I hope y'all stick with me through this one. I think this is really good. And I think that everyone needs to read this. And so here is this devotional for this Saturday, September 4th, 2021, entitled A Brief Summary of Christianity. In the beginning, God created the entire universe and everything in it. This included the earth and the first humans, Adam and Eve. God created us to glorify Him and because He wanted to have a personal, intimate love relationship with us. At some point, He had to decide whether to give us a free will or not. If we were going to truly love Him, then it had to be our free choice to do so or it would mean nothing. I'll bet he thought about that decision for some time because he knew having that could get us in big trouble, and he did, and it did. In the beginning, there was no sin, no pain, and no death in the world. Well, that wonderful situation didn't last long because Adam and Eve used their free will to do the one thing God had told them not to do. They disobeyed him, and in doing this, they brought sin, illness, and death into the world, and it has been here ever since. God forced Adam and Eve out of paradise, but God had already come up with a plan to give humanity a second chance at e eternal life. Do you know what his plan was? He sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, down to earth to live as a human and to teach us how to live in harmony with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and with each other. Now there was absolutely nothing that sin-stained mankind could do to right the broken relationship with its Creator. But Jesus Christ could fix it because he was God's perfect, unblemished lamb, and he willingly sacrificed his human body for all of our sins, past, present, and future. Although he was sinless, he took on the burden of our sins and accepted the horrible punishment for them. He was crucified, died, and was buried, and on the third day he arose from the dead to show us that now we too can rise from the dead of the death of sin to eternal life with the Father in heaven. How much God must love us to have asked His only Son to endure this kind punishment. You must understand that our Heavenly Father does not want one person to go to hell and suffer eternal torment. Hell was not created for us, but rather for the fallen angels who rebelled against God. When Adam and Eve sinned, our God, being a righteous God, had to satisfy justice for what they had done. To summarize, with the death of His Son, Jesus Christ, God the Father had now provided a way for us to again have eternal life if only we would do what? Place our faith in Jesus and accept His free gift of salvation. In other words, we can either let Jesus pay the price for our sins by what He did on the cross, or we can pay the price ourselves by spending eternity in hell. In America, would a good judge let a murderer or rapist go free just because he said he was sorry for what he had done? I don't think so. The law demands that justice be served. The price for this crime must be paid, and Jesus did that for all of us. To let Jesus pay your sin price, here's what you must do. Recognize you are a sinner who needs a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. Confess, agree with God about your sin, that you committed them and it was wrong. Repent of your sins. Turn from sin to God. Ask Jesus to save you by His grace. Turn over the rule of your life to Jesus, letting Him be your Lord. Um, now, if I remember correctly, he didn't put this part here, of course, but um, if I remember this right, on the original copy of this that he read to us in Sunday school, um, he had put his contact information so that people could... Um, you know, contact him if they wanted to accept Jesus or if they had questions or whatever. And um, I'm going to give my email address here to those of you listening on whatever media. <laughs> um, so that is kjw810 at gmail.com. Again, that's kjw, my initials, 810 
And no, it's not my birthday <laughs> at gmail.com. If you want to know, you can ask me that too. But anyway, yeah, I love this. I think this is so good. You know, and I, I just love the fact that they broke it down like this, that, that he broke it down. And, you know, it started with the beginning. Jesus coming to die on that cross for us and come back to life, that was not, that was God's plan A. That was God knew we were going to need a Savior. Isn't that awesome? Praise God. And I also want to say this. You don't have to go to an altar. You can be right where you are. You're in your car, in your bedroom, wherever you are. You can ask Jesus to come into your heart and change your life. I remember when I did it, when I rededicated my life to him for real. It was November 3rd of 94, and I was in my bedroom. And in my own words, I, I knew, and you know, I told him I knew I needed him to be my savior. I confessed the sins that I could think of and he's shown me more sins and he's still dealing with me on that. And I've rep and asked him to help me to, to not do those things anymore. And I, I told him I wanted him to be the Lord and savior of my life and to, to be in control of my life and to save me. And he has done that. And I'm so thankful for that. I'm so thankful for Jesus. So um, I know this was a little bit longer, but hope you stuck with me. And I hope that these were a blessing. And may the Lord bless you all and be with you till tomorrow.